Good evening, RPG Limit Break fans and Final Fantasy Randomized fans, and welcome to another Winter Tournament 2024 race. My name's Caleb. I'm in the booth with Thavian Hawk. How you doing, Thavian? I do well, and very much looking forward to this race. After the races we had earlier, we could hope for some shenanigans. Unfortunately, the forced Black Belt, Black Belt, Red Mage is not repeating. These runners had choices. Yeah, Edgeworth and Sorbius is a fascinating matchup. Edgeworth, a former spring tournament champion from 2018, looking to possibly claim another uh, FFR tournament belt for for their mantle, while Sorbius, up and coming new player, clawing their way through this upper bracket, looking to make a name for himself as well. Both parties um, chose the same run here so the fighter red white what does that mean for these runners they well the fighter comes with spec extra hit points 40 plus as well as time lightning and i can't remember all of them tls uh, yeah, time space. lightning and status. status status okay then thief you got plus five luck i mean more luck is good but also heal mm -hmm. magic uh we're not seeing the black belt that came with tele magic and hurt dragon because the Red Mage, which we do want to take, has Warp and Axe equipment, so there's Warp free. Uh, the Black Mage, we're not seeing on either side, that had Doom Magic, Improved Cat's Claw, whereas the White Mage, we are seeing, gets access to Fighter Armor upon promotion, as well as Buff Magic, so free access to Temper, Fast, and Invis 2, I believe. Yeah, no Black Mage, though, with the Doom Magic and Improved Cat Claw, which is... Fine. We're just gonna hope that that red mage gets the fair, uh, the good black magic in those first four levels. Above level four, it's gonna get a little wibbly with what that red mage slash red wizard can learn. But our runners are off and going and checking white magic. We got level one fade, life two, level one nuke, quad X, and temper. A embarrassment of riches here at level one magic. At this point, if you had gone Thief Rainbow, you would have been like, I need more money. As is, I think they feel like they need more money, because especially in the early game, magic is expensive. And wow, that was really good gear. I think I saw Gold Ring Plus around 1400 there. Pretty good weapons there, too. Sorbius checking uh, the gear shots while Edgeworth is out and going. Foot race to TOF. We'll find out who gets the Temple of... Oh, Sorbius? Both runners. Is this is this the new meta? <laughs> going to Dwarf Cave first. I'm gonna go ahead and jot that one down. Oh man, that's a uh, two free boxes here. So might as well, I guess, check them. There's a bridge. Well, that's actually a really good thing to find now because when they warp back to the Carnary uh, Castle, once they free the princess, if they manage to do it, I mean they've got spells to do it. Uh, oh, yeah. That means they can just go straight up and to, well, Matoya's and Provoka. This is true. That's uh, pretty spicy. I like that. I've, I've done it a few times in, like, pickup races, but checking at first, that's... Huh. Iker in chat saying he's been doing it for a while. Apparently, maybe I just, I'm out of the loop, Davian. <laughs> I've done it a few times personally, usually just warp back out because the items aren't worth it, but you definitely want to walk that bridge out because that's your progression mm -hmm. if they don't find a ship or canoe. And that's not a screen duping here. Those runners were simultaneously pathing through the lower part of TOF. <laughs> Shows you how good these runners are. They're both pretty much hand-holding through and they're like-minded. So far, just a whole lot of gold. I mean, that was over 10,000 gold in that first box, so that helps with the magic early, and pretty much everything else. And you can see Edgeworth doing the veteran play of warping out and saving just in case Garland has something done here. We have that pocket full of money saved. But nothing doing here on Garland. We're on and through. The king will give us a bottle, and the princess will give us a negative one silver bonk. Now... None of that is great news, but the bottle, should we find canoe, should we find the floater, could turn into one of our pieces of gear, or maybe even a tail. Very true. Edge gonna... with... Let's see, Edge cleaning up the, the magic purchases. You're going to buy a lamp, just in case we get that uh, increased dark penalty in the later game. 
And those weren't gold. Oh, Cheerios plus five for 14,000. Yeah, that's most everything that they've got. But if you don't find those, you, you can want to go back and get those late game. 2,500 gold for houses feels pretty really bad. That means we're going to be buying handfuls at a time until we actually get like, real money late in the game. And then, we'll, and then we'll buy like a stack of 20 and never need to worry about them again. But No cheap tents either, but those cabins, 128's not horrible for them. They do heal a little more, but they're mostly just used for scave summoning. As we can see, Sorbius making his way to Matoya is manipulating the encounter table as pretty much every high level runner, basically every runner in this tournament, because basically every runner is a high level run. There's the canoe. Uh oh. Uh oh, SpaghettiOs. Early canoe never feels great. We do see an Xbox here in Matoya's closet, so we're gonna definitely keep that in our back pocket as that is Warmack hanging out with Amasa. So no Sorbius Sorbius doing that little like stutter down in the left, like he's almost like the eight directional movement looks like how quickly he's wiggling that controller. I was wondering at first why they didn't check that, or why Sorbius didn't check that middle box because I missed the X, but yeah, we don't have any sort of mandatory war mech agreement with these runners, so they know where that is. It's very fast to get to, and it's right near Topher. If they feel they need that sword or just need that experience, expect them to jump right there. Absolutely, especially with the early magic that we have. Like By the end game, we're going to have so many nukes and fades firing off, but we don't promote that might be our best choice here. But with the canoe already in hand, there's a good chance we're going to find that floater. Probably won't find it early, but now that we have all of the inner sea ahead of us, there's going to be a lot of opportunities for route divergence between the ice cave and volcano, cheeky play at, Sar or at the sages and crescent, and always that sort of standard progressive check of the marsh cave as Sorbius gets a canal from Bicky, so a boat away from leaving the inner sea, and that boat could literally be anywhere. Yep, getting to see where they go. Hey, Pro Ring's plus five as well. They're only 5,800. That's totally That's... affordable. It's a bad place to find them for them moving to where the shop is, but getting that early intel on where good steel armor, good gold bracelets, and good Pro Rings are, you'll, you'll take that anytime. And it looks like Sorbius oh, yeah. is going left. That's fair. Uh, you get... It's a longer walk, sure. But it does put Marsh Cave in front of you first, which takes a little uh, longer to clear, but it is a quote-unquote safer uh, check with the nukes and fades. We don't have higher level enemies there. We can have enemies with nasty scripts, but we can have them anywhere. Ice Cave equally as gross as the uh, the Marsh Cave with the packs of undead and all of that. But just like those packs of many different types of monsters really pose a problem for the early game because the more monsters you see in a formation, the more likely that one of those monsters has a script. And if a monster has a script, it is inherently more dangerous than a non-scripted monster that's only going to punch you. Um, we but have you can divergence. see massive divergence here. Now we'll see an edge is going to ice early warp. Might as well. I mean, edge going to look to just lean on those spell charges to get through this. And Her with warp, he did buy a couple houses, so Probably this a big downside I see doing this is with Sorbius's route, you're closer to Elfland to mm -hmm. revive your party, you're closer to Elfland to pick up third and fourth level magic. If this works out for Edgeworth and he does something like find the floater here, like a vanilla floater, that could be huge. But this is this is risk. Oh yeah. It is and it's a it's a calculated risk to Edge knows what they're getting into with this play. Um that this isn't their first rodeo. They're gonna, they're gonna show us some stuff tonight, Fabian. And Sorbius getting our that that first box, that first box in Marsh always seems to have a shard in it. 
and you can't tell my confirmation bias otherwise. It really just needs to be something to force you <laughs> not to reset out. Right? Well, we got we got warps, maybe. I think Sorbius also bought a, a handful of houses, so... You hate to use them already, but... You know. Shards are important. That's our XP growth. We got an Opal 5, Opal Bonk plus 5, a Mage Stick, and another Shard. So, Mage Stick's pretty good, and there's another Shard and a Ruby for Sorbius. Definitely wants those two shards. Yeah, that ruby was in the link chest, but you're not going to exit out of that. Using those warp charges, healing back up, getting the charges back and going makes sense. Meanwhile, Edgewater, we saw the incentive chest. Yeah, it had an opal bonk, but uh, nothing nothing real special. That mage stick, though, is going to put in some work here. Should we run out of spell charges and find ourselves in the jam, we now have a third sweeper caster with the fighter thief being able to do something. That is very so, true. And pro cape, universal shield. As long as you're not a black belt. <laughs> it's so weird that they can't use it. <laughs> Alright. Double checking. Sorbius taking this... I feel like I've seen other runners... Wow. Chime in top right box of Marsh. I feel like I've seen other runners take this pathing through... Marsh. And a pack of sword is finding and uh, getting rid of those with the nuke. And it's interesting to me that I is this is this a faster pathing through Marsh Cave that's been discovered? Or is this just a uh, new runner stuff? Because typically you see people come over, check those two rooms, come down, check the incentive room, and then if we've got the key we'll clear the bottom row then kick it over to the room to the right of the incentive box, and then go up to that last box. But checking that top right box first is interesting. Edge gets a slab and a shard in the six pack. Honestly, I'd say it's probably equidistant because it's a more or less flat room. It's not like a maze you find in one of the earth floors. But uh, either way, it, it's kind of like the TOF variants where you have some runners go top left first, then top bottom left because they can reset out if there's nothing good in those top left two chests. So, yeah, definitely something to take yeah. note of, but I'd say it's preference. Meanwhile, Sorbius heading his way towards Elfland as Edgeworth is on his way to the second floor in ice. The second chest full floor. Yeah, and no one really finding anything too gross in either place. The enemies in ice are hitting a lot harder, but Edge still surviving. Utilizing that cure, that heal magic on that thief. That is huge for him, or for Edgeworth. He finally gets something that can be turned in. Uh, Sorbius having picked up the Ruby and the TNT already, that gives him more checks. And that is a ship. That is actually quite big. That ship will show up in Provoca, given the fact that he is in Ice Cave. If he had found it in Volcano, it would have shown up at the in er, Inner Sea Elf Dock. We'll have to contend with this six-pack of unrunnable wizards to get out of here, but Nuke's going to go off and take care of it. Meanwhile, Sorbius clearing through this level 3 and 4 magic, finding some pretty good stuff here. We got level 4 life. Um, we had harm 3, cure 3, and at level 3. We had fire 2 and cake at level 3 black. Um, not, not overall bad magic here in 3 and 4, but Edgeworth with the movement progression, Sorbius with potential dungeon progression, with the um, with the boat there, so let's see what the prince has when he talks to the well, talk to the elf prince. Check what he's got. It's the X Cal. That is huge for promotion. It rolled up, which is just bonus. Even rolled down. That X Cal tends to be one of the best weapons in the game up until chaos. Yeah. So Sorbius, having gone through that left side, leaving, getting into the river system from the south side, you'd assume he's going to go Crescent and then Volcano and won't be hitting ice until he's either cleared Volcano or realized Volcano's too hard for him. 
Yeah, early volcano is scary because we have to bring in a lot of heal pots. We do have some healing magic on this party, but those lava floors are just gonna destroy our low level HP. 10, 82 gold, 22 gold for the heals. Heal pots, totally reasonable. Tents, basically half the price of a, kin or a cabin. I mean, you run out of those, you might as well just buy the cabins. Sorbius not even interested in checking out what level 6 magic is. I'm really curious about these sages, and we've got a crown. So that's another piece of gear or the tail. Good information to have. Bill a while until Astos gets his crown back. But, uh, well, at least we know where it is. Edgeworth will probably make his way there at some point. He has the ship, he has the canal, so once he's done with, uh, once he's done with Marsh, I'm going to assume he's going straight either to check Sarda or down to... Well... Do you think he would go with the Chime to Mirage early? Well, Sorbius, I mean, has a lot to do before we can make those leaving the NRC decisions. While Edge has the top of Earth to contend with. And Marsh Cave, and like if he wants to, if they want to come back to Volcano. But Edge has Volc. Oh, I'm sorry, has Ordeals and Waterfall also on the table. He is fading Marsh, or he, he appears be, to be. Yeah. He could be going to the River Dock. It is closer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Edge might dock on the uh, the outer river there, but nope. Yeah, 100 fading it. So we'll not get that chime for a while. He will get the crown, though, because it looks like he's going to Crescent. And hey, Sorbius finds some EXPs in Volcano. That's pretty nice to see. Especially with all the casts of Nuke and Fade and whatnot. Right. Putting that canoe to good use, just crossing the moat. Will check level 6 magic, finds Exit and Ruse for white magic, and level 6 Ice 3. Nothing too special for black, but that that Exit would be an upgrade in some ways to the warp. Yeah, that Exit spell could be purchased by the white mage, will not be learnable by the red mage or the red wizard, unfortunately, that top slot of level 6. You know, so Sorbius picking up a rune sword plus three out of the hairpin and a help heal on plus five. That's solid caster gear and possible armor. Edge, gonna check volcano here. Spicy, I like it. I love it. I want some more of it. Sorbius checking the the final hairpins. Just get a little bit of gold. Gonna come into the volcano armory proper. Get a little dagger. Hey, house is always welcome. Adamant, so now we can do a full dwarven sweet check once we get that key. Light axe plus four is going to be unlimited harm twos for the white mage. You'll love to see it. Flame sword plus five is also great. Ice armor plus six, another great thing. And even if that ice, or even that that uh, light axe doesn't get used for casting. The Red Mage can actually equip it because it has the plus axe bonus. Looks like uh, Sorbius is going to go with the rune, rune Sword there, though, and uh, have that Light Axe as a caster item. Yeah, that's that's a solid, solid play there. Already stacking up some late game gear for both her first party, along with just good starting weaponry, which is huge to see. Gonna warp out. Yeah. Edge walking into the Volcano Armory, they're going to find that wealth of treasures down here as Sorbius is going to push past and go onto the Agama floor with that Rune Sword. Could be making a play on carry early. Love to see it. Definitely a risky play early on, but I mean, you've got a four-man party, you're going to get a few levels coming down. It could totally be done. Be done. I mean, with the early quad X and all of those heavy sweepers, if we get to carry, all we need is a second round. One nuke, one fade should put her well within quad X range. So all we got to do is survive one round. Surely carry wouldn't do anything that would destroy our entire party in one round, right? She wouldn't do that. I 
should point out it's a Danny seed. Eh, Danny rolls a lot of seeds. <laughs> this is true. This is very true. And there's a Katana plus one. So this Danny seed, not only did it front load the magic at level one, it sure as heck rolled a lot of this gear up and made it relatively early to get. And Sorby is actually running from the loose Agama. He doesn't want to deal with it, it seems. Finds Clearly the rod, here. though. Business only. So, no fights, shards, rods, and I've seen enough Danny seeds to know that it's 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 50-50. I'll, I'll give Danny a break here. It's not all, uh, they're not all bad. <laughs> this is very true. And uh, with that rod being found, when Edgewater, when Edgeworth finds that, ooh, ice plus three shield as well, uh, that gives him a place to go because he can go turn in... Or he can go... Oh, and Oxy. Wow. That's two dungeons fully unlocked by this dive into Volcano. That's crazy. So, Volcano huge here. The fascinating thing is... Edge will have all those items. They will have the Oxio. They will have the Rod. Will they still fade Marsh. I could see fading Marsh. That's for... It's totally doable. I mean, not getting the, uh, the Chime and or Cube to get into Mirage and or Sky, that's a lot of shards and some good encounters that you might, gr you might be able to grind on plus the four shards from Tia, but uh, given the fact that we don't need that many shards, it's totally possible that uh, that entire section of the map can be faded. Now, what's fascinating, Thavian, I just thought of the red D-box could hold a floater. Could hold a floater. It's not likely, given that how many other boxes left in the world that we have access to, but if that floater's there... Or if Sorbius just, when those Sorbius would have to, uh, he would need the floater there. Otherwise, he has to go to Ice Cave. Um, but just, just, just spitballing here to find out where we, how we don't need a, a boat. But we're gonna find out here in about three minutes. Um, Odron in chat is calling for a max roll nuke from. Uh, carry and Red D having nuclear, uh, clearly Odron, a veteran of the community here, doesn't understand how Script Shuffle works. You want to talk about Script Shuffle, Fabian? As Sorbius finds the single gold bracelet that is going to be available in a box. Um, the way the Script Shuffling works, we have all four final fiends, Chaos and War Mech, all of their normal skills and their characteristics get shuffled into one pool and then split out among them. So you might find War Mech and it might just cast very low level magic and not punch. Or you could find a Lich that rolled heavy and has every single nuke. Uh, Ooh. There's plenty of options there. And we have Sorbius fighting carry after all. White Mage has been down for a, few, for a while now. And there goes the, the red, red mage. Ones. So this is uh, as bad as it could go. We have to get some crits out of that rune sword now. Two hits, 76 damage isn't going to be enough. We need the, that quad X caster to stay alive for this fight. Two hits, 109. We might be getting closer. That fighter should have better absorbed. Six hits, 72 damage does not bode well for us. 2 hits 137 comes out. 2 hits 114. That's a better punch from carry. 2 hits 60 damage. 6 hits 18 damage. 2 hits 124. Sorbius, by the skin of his teeth, has to contend with bulls. That really shows you the value of the ice armor and ice shield that they pull. Or that oh no! Oh, oh no! Bulls. Oh no! The bulls had death touch. I don't think he, Sorbius realized that he had an ambush on those bulls. He could have just ran. Early so 90s Chicago, just coming at him. So Michael Jordan, Scotty Pippen, they just got the better of Sorbius there. So that puts Edgeworth sort of 
firmly in the driver's seat of this early game. Still anyone's race, but Sorbius will have to re-clear that Agama floor. N maybe kept notes in their head of which boxes to open, but that is the first bad beat for one of our runners, and if Edgeworth doesn't get that information on Death Touch Bowls, we might find them waiting for us in Earth Cave should we go there. That is very true. You've got a lot of commonality, gets a gold bracelet. Between Ice Cave and Marsh, you saw some similar undead partner characters in those. Earth Cave and Volcano, you see commonality with the bowls. It's just all that risk, and because of the shuffled skill trees, I mean, we could see these Agamas actually have instant death magic just suddenly, if they survived. Yeah. Scary, scary stuff. Now, Edgeworth, I don't know if they are on a similar encounter table step count. I don't know if he's, if they're going to catch the, uh, the, the death touch bowls immediately after the fight, but Coming into the fight, everybody's standing up. Fade comes out for 268, already in a better position. Edgeworth could take out Carrie in one round, but won't. Doesn't have quad X, so we're going to repeat that first round. Nuke rolls through 183, gets it done. Edgeworth going to pick up their first two beam shards and does not hit the death touch bulls. One point, the thing to point out, not having that quad X, yeah, you've got access to nuke, but quad X with these splags hits up to 700, I believe it is, hit six. points, rather than six. six. That's yeah. still double its base of no. 300. Yeah. It's so, fantastic. And it, with that, all of that magic at level one, it, it, it does make it tough to figure out what you're doing, but... That is the inherent risk and reward of the Red Mage. Sometimes you're not going to get any magic. Sometimes you get good magic in one level at white, and then good magic at black the next level, and you can kind of trade off where one spell um, level is bad for one co one color, while the other one is good for the other kind of thing. Like that's the the beauty of the Red Mage. But when it's too good, that's when like both white and black magic have great magic. It's like, what are we going to do? You know, we have to we have to choose between some of our favorite kids here. As Sorbius says, I don't want to deal with this again. I'm just going to get the items and get out of here. But unfortunately, as he climbs back up out of this volcano, he doesn't come across potential bulls again on Volcano 1. And there's quite a bit of steps that have to be taken outside of the lava tiles that could reveal more bulls. So interesting. It looks like Edgewater is out. He's going to see. Going to check the store in on rack. Has access to waterfall as well. Doesn't have to die of crack in any means. But realistically, I understand why Sorbius left. He is definitely gun shy after fate or after dealing with Carrie. Yeah, he loses the gold bracelet that was in a red D chest, but he can buy those. He knows where they are. And he has options for those two shards he misses by not actually facing carry at the moment. But uh, yeah, this is a lot of early divergence coming in. Definitely going to love it. Edgeworth, the, the veteran runner, is choosing Chested City here. Um, Volcano, the second most chests in the game outside of the Mirage Sky combination. See the third most has like I think it has one box fewer than Volcano, so gonna keep relying on the volume of boxes to open over the location. So, but you're absolutely right. Like after clearing Sea Shrine, they will be able to just pop right into the, the waterfall, and then from there hit ordeals if they still don't have the floater, and then from there they can head up to Melmond and do. Earth Cave, but unfortunately they won't have the Ruby until they go to Marsh Cave. It will be very much interesting if Sorbius gets out of the Inner Sea, heads that way, and we can see what Sarda and Titans have, because Sorbius already has that Ruby. But I, I find it interesting that at these lower levels, relatively speaking, Edgewater or Edgeworth is going down the left side towards Kraken, 
I doubt Edgeworth is gonna go to Kraken, but yeah. You never know. Stranger things have happened. Um, <laughs> there's a white shirt plus three, so the seed is rewarding the play, giving giving Edge the evasion magic. Now, what's fascinating here is we've seen all of the boxes in the inner sea, minus the key locks. What we haven't seen is a key or a loot. Now, in my experience running these, when that happens, that means they're in Earth Cave or they're in Titans. So, Sorbius could find themselves at a decent advantage if loot and key rolled into Earth Cave and then, say, Floater, for instance, is behind the the key and then you get in the air and then you go check cardia and boom there's a cube and then all of a sudden the, the whole dynamic of the seed could change on a, on a complete win but uh classic gamer in chat is pointing out that bulls do infest the earth cave but sometimes you just gotta buy those those plus five pro rings and hope that they work just had to point out Edgeworth checking that top left room and then warped out to come back in to save the possible steps for encounters. Not confident about walking around on seafloor as much as possibly be. Could be preserving charges. So we have everything we need should we want to go all the way down so we're not wasting nukes here and there. Another katana. Sadly, no legendary sword blursting on any of the party members, so that extra katana is a little wasted. If only this was Final Fantasy 2, where you could dual wield them. Well, that's why the thief has double hit, hit growth, right? That's why the thief fixes came to be so many years ago. Sorbius picking up the slab, gonna find a ship and be very happy. Absolutely. Edge and a full on run strats. Down goes the white mage. Good thing that thief has life magic, but so does the red mage. And going towards Kraken. This is kind of crit. Now, Sorbius did wipe out a volcano, had to redive it. Do you see Edgeworth choosing to dive left side again if, if they do wipe, or do you think they'll just go mermaids and then come back later if needed? That's a good question. There wasn't any sort of progression here on Kraken's side. We did find a decent amount of gear, but I think... I don't think Edge makes this play if they're not confident they can kill Kraken. So, I'm curious to see how they're going to approach it. They're level 14, so the levels aren't as terrible as you think this, say, early in the game, but we're 30 minutes in. That's the beauty of these fights. It always feels like the early game is forever, but then you realize you're 31 minutes in and, oh no, I gotta go. <laughs> uh, Edgeworth, gonna pull Kraken 1, but first we're going to spam some heal 2s, get everybody back up, and top off with the heal pots, and here we go, Kraken 1 party time. We're going to swing, swing, nuke, and... Fast the fighter, so fasting that flame sword wielding fighter three. It's 144 damage. Comes out before the fast. There's the nuke for 127. Thief takes a hit from Kraken, so we're about 360 damage in. We're gonna keep the damage pumping in. Fasted fighter six hits 29. Two hits 44. Not not great here. Fade for 146. Fire two is gonna take care of the thief. So far, pretty kind Kraken, 163 there, and the last few nukes and fades coming out. 274, finally a decent roll there. 126. Kraken must be on death's door as we are edging closer and closer. Final fade rolls in. 282, enough to get it done. Edge, with that Kraken kill, is going to be at... 13 shards? Meanwhile, Sorbius, having gotten out of ice, got the ship and broke it, and turned in that crystal that came out of ice, found the tail. So that Ooh. is promotion available for Sorbius, also pushing Sorbius down towards uh, Onrak, cause, or, or the desert for that matter, because Cardia is right between the two. I would love to see Sorbius 
go promote because we have all that wonderful gear that we found. Get some better defense first party and then come back up to Melmond. Without the key, Edge is going to miss this TFC box, which, without having eyes on the loot, we don't know if it's required yet. This is very true, and also Power Bonk coming out of the Adamant turn in. We're about to see what the, t the TNT turns into. Still haven't seen the Vorpal, still haven't seen the Roostick, and there TFC it is. Bonk! TFC Bonk! <laughs> Get your Bonks in chat. Boop, boop, boop. No hooray love for Sorbius. Edge making their way to Mermaids. Sorbius gonna go check in on Astos. See what he's cooking. A Vorpal plus two. Pretty good sword. Especially when you've got the x in hand for the night. That Vorpal will go on to your ninja, because hey, promotion's already in hand too, so... I'm pretty sure both runners have katanas, so that Warble can go on the red mage of all people. We might get three melees. That is very nope. true. And then we can kill Warmech, and we can have four melees. <laughs> well, Edgewater pulled out another light axe rolled up out of sea, so we might actually see a red mage wielding a light axe. <laughs> I think Edge's um, red mage is swinging that light axe already. Translates the slab. Here we go. Mermaid time. A little money, little XP. Nothing bad there. Quick look at white magic at 5. Harm 2. X for, I mean, nothing special. Black magic. We're going to see Saber and Rub. Yeah. Stun is stun is an okay find if you don't have Quad X. We've seen a lot of the, the denizens of the Trash Island using stun strats through their races, so definitely something they're probably talking about in the Trash Island Strategy Department. And route-wise, Sorbius does leave the Melman Continent, does not check Sarda, does not go to Earth, going straight for promotion. Absolutely. Alright, two boxes left. Is Edge going to get a floater here in Sea Shrine? Odds are not likely. But another shard. Not nearly enough charges to warp out. That's level 8 magic. So, gonna have to walk it out for the most part. Meanwhile, Sorbius promoted. Gonna get all the gear swapped around. And may we go into Onrec on it. Alright, so as Sorbius comes behind Edge to kind of clean up what they did here. As Edge, I'm imagining, will go into the waterfall while we're here. Um... Sorbia's going to check the caravan. Okay, wasn't anticipating this. Oops, we don't haven't have... seen a shop item. Yeah, we haven't seen a, a double item for sale, so... Floater cube could be available. Nope, not today. But I love the reset back to the boat. And time to go to Sea Shrine as Edge walks into the waterfall. We have six boxes here in the robot. Five or six. I can never remember with Waterfall, to be honest. Getting some good experience. That three-pack of mud galls going to do good. Uh, 16 across the board. You usually don't want to see that many levels early, but th there's no guarantee of promotion in Edgeworth's mind, so take the levels true. and get the charges. Yep, 100%. Interesting, Sorbius going to, or going to Waterfall instead of going to sea immediately. It's a quick check. Sorbius may feel behind with the, the bull white, so might be leaning towards a gamble check here. Maybe he's thinking Edge isn't going to check this. The irony is, of course, that both runners are now in the Waterfall. Taking the robot's money, and now the robot's like, but please, can I have it back? Little heel pots, and there's a floater. Ooh, buddy. That unlocks the map for both runners when Sorbius gets theirs. Uh, Edgeworth, done with this continent. Probably not going to check the desert store. Wait until he, until they get access to the sky and can just land right on it. Yeah. And with Slab and Bottle, might be hoping for Tail there, but we know that Tail will 
likely, or I'm sorry, the the bottle and slab will likely yield the incentive ribbon and the incentive brew stick. Well, just as said, Edgeworth immediately checks the shop in the desert, doesn't <laughs> find anything, and Sorbius looked like had some movement problems and went past the floater, came back, got an encounter, and finally got it themselves. So this is going to be... Do you, uh, you assume that Sorbius will go to sea and then get in the air afterwards. There's no point in leaving the continent without getting the job done? Well, Sorbius does have the cube. I would like to... I mean, I wouldn't hate skipping C, but with him having already completed uh, Volcano and Ice, yeah, I think he has to do C Shrine here, while Edge is going to clean up the remaining key item turn-ins that we haven't seen, and likely clear Cardia. But still no loot or key. I'm telling you, Fabian, they're on Earth 4. <laughs> <laughs> They've got to be. Or Sarda, or Titans, but Opal plus three. Oh, Opal was the other one we were missing. Yep, the only thing left is whatever the slab turns in, and as it stands, Edworth hasn't been to Melman Continent, so it doesn't have that slab translated. Right. TNT was the brewstick. That's where my, my memory got messed up. So the slab turning would be the ribbon. Has Sorbius taken a, a waterfall, Ryan? Well, if you get a lot of whiz mummies, which in that case there's three there, that is a good amount of experience. And with all these casters, the large enemy parties go down relatively quick. Uh, meanwhile, Edgeworth with the airship in proximity, going to check all the chests in the Cardia Isles. Looking for loot, looking for key. We are at 17 shards for Edge. I believe we're about eight or so. For Sorbius. Yeah, eight. Oops, that'll soon be Sorbius's shard count or close to it as well, given the fact that they're going down into the Sea Shrine. Or, no, nope. Sorbius is gonna fade Sea Shrine and go into the sky and finish probably his checks once the gear. Interesting. I was uh, assuming that the the waterfall tile grind was setting up sea, a sea dive to kind of combat the insecurity. So nothing doing here in Cardia. So that means our cube is either in Ordeals or the Earth Continent. As Edge flies up to Melmund, finishes the proximity checks, and no, I don't want to go. I don't want to go to Marsh Cave. <laughs> She saw the, the little decision clicking happening, like, no, oh, let's do Earth Cave instead. Well, so, if Titans doesn't turn out to have the cube or the loot or the key, but, then it won't really hurt Edgeworth, but it's totally possible that all three could be in Titans, which, scary thought. But he doesn't, or Edge doesn't have the ruby, so a second bonk off of a, a check here for Edge. Bonked off TFC door, bonked off the Titan. So, uncharacteristic moves for Edge here as they prepare to go into the Earth Cave. If Edge keeps bonking off doors like that, end up losing the sharpness of the Edge. So, ah. here's hoping. <laughs> then again, you just put in some more grind in, get sharp again. It all works out. And hey, there's the bowls, only one of them. And thankfully, Edgeworth gets away before finding out what they did to Sorbius. So just money here so far. Nothing really jumping out in Earth 1. Sorbius' ruby could prove to be the, the big game changer of them all as nothing doing Earth 1. Be interesting to see, you know, we're getting our first look at Earth, what kind of encounters there are and what numbers, because the slightly higher than average unrunnables count in this flag set has proven to be very annoying to many of our runners, like Sorbius right now, dealing with those four pack of unrunnable zombies. With Squint! Hooray! Edgeworth onto Earth 2. Nothing doing here, top right. Gonna go into the spike tile Earth room here and find out what that Earth elemental is protecting. Sorbius. Okay, 
Would you say that uh, Sorbius is being bullied by this seed? I know I would not say that. <laughs> shards and shards and an ice sword, and Sorbius gets the first ribbon of the seed. So that using that in that the uh, flags have added to Lafayne, get all the charges stacked back up. Edge on to Earth 3. No loot, no key. Chat is already sort of spinning up their fan theories on the grossest locations for stuff. And so far, I think Classic Gamer with key and ordeals of loot and TFC might be worst case scenario, especially for Edge, having um, cleared all of C minus TFC. But Edge, veteran runner, will make a quick full clear of the game if need be before realizing that they have to go back. That, but, that fate of Marsh right now, I'd say Edgeworth has definitely made the difference with the progression through C and mm -hmm. What not? Yeah, not having the tail yet, not being able to promote is hindering things like early magic cast for the knight or the thief, but it's working right now, and either they get there or they don't, but with the levels they're getting on this, they're gonna be probably in good shape. The weapons have been rolling up, be it the promoted weapons or not. Well, the good thing is, is that one edge does clean up those key item turn-ins with the, the floater and they get that tail out of Matoya they um I mean if there's a good chance that they fight the uh, Warmech right after promotion and if the Warmech fight goes as well as it could and just the thief and the knight are left alive they will likely jump up a handful of levels to at least get a few spell charges so and that knight very could true. have life too. So here we go. There's the key in Earth 4. I think I called that one. Now is loot also going to be down here? Oh, free pro ring. Love to see those. As About 8,000 gold say. doesn't need to pay. And a ribbon coming out of there. That's our first loose ribbon found. Love to see it. So one ribbon left in the game. Good chance it's in the sky cave. Earth Crazy looking at all. that, Edgeworth is a line shy of go. Very much needs that loot before those shards make a difference, though. Mm -hmm. For anything other than the experience gain bonus. Three box, three boxes left here, and Edge knows that they will have to go into Marsh Cave, because there will not be dungeon progression. There's another shard, there's a great axe, and there's some images. As mm -hmm. Sorbius shuffles some gear around, edge. So we know the cube is going to be in Titans or one of the key locks. Yeah. Edgeworth doesn't necessarily go to Marsh immediately though, because as you said, with the key has access to all the key locks, which will also incentivize routing towards Matoya to get that tail. And there's a good chance, I mean Edge is going to get two shards here for taking care of Lich. That will put them... Four shards from go mode, and there's a good. Like, we know that there's at least, I think, two shards of marsh. So there's a good chance that dwarves and the other key lock locations will have shards for Edge. And just like that, Edgeworth through a full clear of Earth out of there with the shards only needs four. And the loot. We keep forgetting that. Uh, Pickles and Beer pointing out that Mirage is also on the table. That is absolutely correct. Uh, we have not seen what is on the first two floors of Mirage in those, what, 18 boxes? Edgeworth's going eh, to... Not interested in the portal. Yep, as you said, has the katana, has the Excal, just needs the tail, and we know that they're going to get it. Mm -hmm. Northwest check. We got a cabin. A little money. And a cube! Alright. That's good intel, but that's worthless for Edgeworth until they go down to Marsh, if they go down to Marsh. Which, really, not guaranteed needed unless the loot turns out to be in Marsh Lock, which would be hilarious. 
Yeah, of course. I don't know if Sorbius would call it hilarious. <laughs> Sorbius would call it a good thing for for him at the moment if Edgeworth doesn't check that. So another shard here for Edgeworth. I think that puts him to 25 now. So three to go. And there's still what, like 15 boxes left in the key locks. Yep, six here, three up in Toph, and then ten at Dwarf, so nineteen? Oh, nice. So we really just need one shard in each location. Or not. <laughs> Dwarf My Cave brain. sometimes has several. My brain is failing me whether it's ten or eight in Dwarfs. Either way, it's plenty of chests to check, and here we go. Edgeworth about to get the tail... Ignoring the checkbox, understandably. Yeah. But. Ooh, in the check it said Masa plus five, so we're gonna take the fight now. Interesting. I really thought your route idea of coming back after promotion made sense, but Edgeworth really wants it. And stun, nothing special of K or of Warmack yet. Obviously, not that much damage done to Warmack with those fades, the nukes. Going with the sword, 55 damage, 49, not getting much out of those swings. Nuke rolling high, 380. Lit 2 doing chip damage. Fade coming out from the White Mage, 298. These have been some much better rolls up with the magic than we've seen previously so far. Fire 2 doing more relative chip damage. A lot of damage to the parties that don't have, or party members that don't have protection from it. Nuke, 370. Wow, this war mech is definitely getting chunked at. Does not have good ma or M def. Uh, lit to again a lot of low power spells. Now this is nice for Edward the C with the party as it is. Gets the kill, gets the Masa, wow. but now we know that all of those really weak chip damage spells are not going to be in in Topher. That's kind of worrying. Masa plus five. I don't even know if Edge promotes at this point. <laughs> all right, gonna check these. Last three boxes in Topher, or I'm sorry, just regular Tope, and then go to the Dwarf Cave. Meanwhile, Sorbius stunned the right side, went through Marsh, or went through uh, Mermaids, I should say, and going down the left side towards Kraken. And Edge sees the Dragon Armor plus two, doesn't drop anything, so I don't think Edge is promoting. Or we'll just get that later. But. Might be feeling a little bit of the pressure there. There is a Pro Ring plus 5 that we will drop some stuff for. So, three Pro Rings in the game, one Gold Bracelet in the game. Always good to find it out in the world instead of having to buy them, even though they were kind of cheap in, the, in this seed. Um, Classic Gamer pointing out in chat that Warmax MDEF is always 200, so those were just really good luck rolls for Edge. Again, ooh, Power Bump, we can take those, as Saracen would say. So, low 20s across the board for Edge, where I believe they need one shard now. Two to two go, shard. and two plenty of chests. Okay. I will take that. But yeah. do they have room for it with all the shuffling that needs to go down? Throwing the night gear on the ground. Yeah, we're not we're not promoting. One and there's our last two shards. So we still need a loot though, my friends. So loot can only be in one of two places. It is either in Marshlock or it is in Mirage slash Sky. Now, uh, Edgeworth. Did Edgeworth is... not no. remember that loot hasn't been found? Are we going to see a. Oh, nope, oh, he, he just checked, checked it. They, they checked it. So, Edge saves themselves from the third bonk of the seed um, and is going to Marsh Cave. Because that's the only access... place they can go. Yeah, if, if the uh, loot is not here, then. We're looking Mirage, Sky, or Ordeals. I guess we're Titans. Titans is also there. Titans, Ordeals, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so. There's still plenty of places to go, I lied. So, as our runners are kind of overlapping with each other, tomorrow is the, the Super Bowl between the 
the 49ers and the Chiefs, they've been, I don't really care much about football, but what does fascinate me is snacks. The food that people eat during uh, such sporting events and social engagements. I asked the runners prior to the race what their sort of go-to snacks are. Sorbius, big fan of the classic nachos and cheese, cheese dip. Edgeworth called for crackers and blue cheese, but then just said, hey, just just give me the whole charcuterie plate. I'm curious, what are your go-to game day snacks? Well, nacho is definitely a classic because it was literally invented at a football stadium. Uh, but uh, yeah, I will always say a good salted pretzel, a hot dog, and a collector's cup soda. That just covers it up maybe a beer if i'm feeling lucky or feeling like my team's not going to do well but uh <laughs> usually just the pretzel and the hot dog all right so edgeworth gives the titan his favorite game day snack of a ruby and gets the bad news that it is not here we have to go back to marsh cave so edge getting trolled a little bit here by this loot location as sorbius Heads on down to Kraken. I I love a I love a hot dog, man. Like it's it's a like a good hot dog. Like there's some bad hot dogs I, I'd rather not have. Um, people in uh, the Harumph calling for wings with whatever is hotter than hot sauce. Odron also calling for hot sauce. Classic gamer also calling for wings. Like everybody out here loving the wings. I'm a big fan of wings. I get I get a little... I like hot wings. I like hot wings. I would rather have fried chicken. Because hot wings, they always get like soggy, and the skin will get a little rubbery, just like our seafoody friend here, Kraken. Calamari can get a little rubbery too, if not prepared well. But chicken wings, when they're like kind of sitting in that sauce, they get a little soft. Skin gets like not great, but if you cook them well enough so they stay crispy while sauced, that is a S-tier hot wing, my friend, but typically I'll just go for, give me a standard fried chicken. I just rub it in the sauce myself every bite. <laughs> now, I did think of something that's better than a hot dog, but not every sporting event has them. A really good spicy brat. Gotta oh, yeah. love a bratwurst. I love a hot sausage. All right, two boxes into this marsh lock check, and there's a black shirt. We don't, we don't need those. Not with this party. Sorbius, I... with the full clear of C Shrine, is net will minus TFC ten shards from Go Mode, and we're going to Mirage. We're back on that route divergence path, my friend. Only a few places left to go, and between our runners, we are going to be seeing them. Does not have access to the cube that Edgeworth got, and. If the tracker notes are true, does not have access to the key yet either. Nope. And there we go. This is the last check for Edgeworth, but we already know it's a chime. He, they do have access to Mirage and Sky now. So it's that or ordeals. Yeah. Yeah, it's a... Uh... Unless we miss the Or it's TFC, item. my friend. <laughs> I, I think we checked all of the shops. I don't think we saw a duplicate item, but I also don't think we saw a um, an item item for sale because it would only be at this point the um, the loot for sale. So Edge flying out of just frustration lands the ship, saves it, and is going to walk into this Mirage Tower. So we are on Loot Watch 2024. Is it in Mirage Sky or? Is it in ordeals? Sorbius oh. with so much of the game still in front of him. Edgeworth, this is all we have left for ordeals. Edgeworth taking that delicious random blue steak he found that they found in the desert. So that's some more experience and definitely had the chance not promoting as it clearly seems. So both runners sort of getting burnt a little bit by skipping Earth with that key, although there wasn't too much doing in the key locks. We did find a handful of shards, which are always great to find, but it's there's also the cube in the key locks, so not going to Earth or... Oh, defense sword. 
there's the loot. So, Sorbus has got half of the puzzle. Unfortunately for him, that is the final piece of the puzzle for Edge. Now, Sorbus will have to go all the way to Earth 4 to get their key. But that is also the only place they really have left to go because there's no way Sorbus goes to ordeals over Earth Cave. That is pretty, yeah, definitely yeah. not not going anywhere near there. And there's one thing I do believe the shards, the required shards doesn't mean that they can't get more shards. And the That's more correct. shards they get does amplify the experience in gold gain. So yeah, Edgeworth has shards for go mode, but each shard they get stacks on to the potential for more experience for the party. Now, another fascinating wrinkle here should this there's the loot for edgeworth so that is full on everything go mode 58 37 in if topher is particularly gross which in these flag sets in this tournament would not be a surprise now sorbius is in a little bit of a stronger position having promoted having multiple swords to swing around all of that really great gear will have access to life two on the night once we buy magic so greater survivability through topher but if edge hits this topher and hits it hard and fast there's a good chance they push through it so we'll find out as edge makes his way makes their way to the phantom floor Definitely yes, not trying to get a big walking grind, or at least not starting early. He'll run away from both the Chimera Chimera pack and some ice dragons. Yep. So. We are in we are in resource conservation mode for this dive. Realistically, Edgeworth may be on the impression that Sorbius is right there or maybe right in front, given the fact that both of these runners are very skilled, very capable. And again, Edgeworth also knowing the chime was in Marsh could imagine having found the loot in Mirage that Sorbius checked that early and mm -hmm. definitely had the lead there. Another wrinkle here is I saw in Edge's menu a TNT. That TNT turned into a ruse stick, which is not vital to a Topher dive, but it can be a difference maker. True. Having the white shirt, and I do believe they have the white shirt, as well as having the defense sword, mm -hmm. that's Ruse, and that's an evasion stack to go across the team. But having two me uh, melee characters with extra survivability from that dodge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's uh, I, with the defense sword, it does help a bit, but um, we're going to find out what this Lich do. 3 hits 205, Lich cast fast, Dash comes in, 4 hits 314, Lich is not long for this world. We're going to swing, swing, wait, wait. 3 hits 423, everybody's favorite undead evil spellcaster is destroyed. And level 23 is gained across the board as we head over to the second iteration of carry. And everybody's favorite multi-armed demon Marilith. Sorbius trudges through this earth cave, desperate for a key. Nuke fires off 266. Fade rolls in 306. Big old chunky roll for the Fade. Masa swings 326. Brutes swing 132. So carry also not long for this world. That's a ton of damage. Almost 800 damage in the first round. 127. And that nuke Fade for minimum damage 80. Gets it done. So far, this Topher, not too bad. But not. we do, however, have Kraken 2 and Tia 2. They truly tend to be the most gatekeeper of the refights. And knowing what we've seen, yeah, Fast is out of the pool, which is good to see. But we haven't seen Cure 4. We have not seen any of the nukes, nuclears, or the high damaging abilities like Inferno or... We yeah. also haven't seen, like... The tornadoes of the swirls, the non-elemental ones, as well as the slow two, which could be devastating, because we we only have two shots of fast, and that is on the white mage. We don't have any fast for the red mage. I don't think we saw fast for sale anywhere. Four hits, two six. Fade for one seventy-four. Nuke 
getting good turnover here against Kraken. Or no, I guess I just missed Kraken's turn. <laughs> um, three hits, 127, another fade. 120, and there's the cure four, so... You hate to see it after putting in almost close to like 6700 damage. But, but you'd, you'd rather, rather see it, it this on, early. Yeah. You'd rather see it on Kraken than on Chaos. Especially if it indicates a spell happy Kraken. If, oh, there's a skill, so nuclear devastates the party. We do have life one, which does work in battle. And it's time to... Oh, uh, we did not win the, the turn order battle there as... The life will go out, but the cure three did not work, and now it's we don't have the roost stick on this character, so we're swinging cure three in ice three in. Edge is gonna do it again. Sorbius, three boxes away roughly from getting his key, and one more shard and a lich kill from being in shard go mode. Shoutouts to Ragnarok for doing the tracking here, keeping the count of those shards for us up here so we can make comments like that and Davian we have ADR on the restream always good to have him here ADR does so much for this community just with the tracker and overlay we're using let alone his willingness to jump on and help out with the production side of things so ever ever thankful for ADR you know what and else I'm course, thankful for Ragnarok, ADR for? huge tracking bonuses I'm happy that ADR is here because he is the predominant creative voice behind these flags. <laughs> and so when our runners inevitably <laughs> have some grievances to share, we have we have the, somebody that can hear them. So ribbon and pro ring, I'm just that's all in love. I <laughs> so a little more survivability for Sorbius. Ew, this pack, Ur Imps with Cure 4 and instant death magic hitting that ninja. Not not things that Ur, or the Edgeworth saw coming down through Earth before, but uh, at the rate at which Sorbius is making their way or making his way through Earth, we could see Sorbius catching up with Edgeworth fairly quickly. I'd say probably about three minutes out, depending on how the fight glitch mm -hmm. goes and how many encounters they get. Now, Sorbius will. So, 24 Four shards. Four shard, so he'll have... He'll, they'll need two more where they get so them, I don't know. We'll be able to pick them up as, right away in Dwarf Cave if they just do the key item checks or they have the key locks, but there's one. So, just needs to do Dwarf Cave, and they'll be fine. Because I believe there are two there. As Edge makes it back to carry two. And... We know that Carrie 2 is beatable, but here, this time, she's got Swirl. Non-elemental AoE cast rolls out. And we're just waiting on Dash. Dash was doing some good damage with that Rune Sword, but... Preferring to just have him wait instead of watching that full battle animation. 4 hits 450 from that Moss of 5 gets it done. Edge back on that faithful Kraken 2 floor as Sorbius rolls up to Lich 1. That palette swap troll looks pretty sick. It'll be very interesting to see the differential when Sorbius does make it in so for with access to those higher level weapons and the better armor. When we're seeing these late later themes with bigger punches or more damaging spells, that really could make the difference. This coming up on the Kraken 2 fight, gonna go with uh, buffing, going with fast. Cure 4 comes out immediately, definitely the best place to see it. No damage having done. Four hits, four damage, nothing special there. Temper comes out, fast comes out. The Masa swing with a temper and fast. Eight hits, 940. That is a lot of damage up front. Fade comes out, very much thing. 230, again, a good nuke, a good fade, and there you go. Edgeworth finally threw. To Tia 2. Definitely better off that time than the last. But will Tia be the bigger gatekeeper? You know, Sorbius picking up more gear, finds the Age of Shield, finds the last shards they need out of 
that dwarf lock gonna head towards Topher you can only imagine and Tia being pulled that is temper coming out that is a nearly dead ninja or a thief already fade coming out getting 105 nothing doing there two hits 274 that's an evasive Tia who has tornado taking out the ninja goes with swing goes with heal three and he or heal two and heal two trying to bring the party up out of that critically low health span there we still can see more nukes or nuclears Ooh, sorbius actually taking the route has not hit that masa chest gonna fight the war mech white shirt coming out for the for the white mage for edgeworth blaze is coming out that's more substantial damage the red mage is down so it's down to two party members but 376 on that swing definitely doing damage Ooh, needs more evade. 135 left on the, on the warrior. Bytra comes out to stack that evasion, but if a big spell casts or a punch gets through that evasion, that, that knight could, or fighter could go down. Fade comes out 120. Four hits, 210. Going with swing, going with fade. Really wants to push the power. And there you go. Edgeworth through the fight with the fiends. Gonna raise his party up, or their party up, and get the heals done before moving. Does not want a encounter a smart play as Sorbius takes on Warmeg, gonna get a last little push of levels, going to get that sword, should not have a problem here. Excal doing big work there, 700 damage, so our next swing should take care of it. And there's another 700 damage swing, so anything goes sideways here for Edge on this chaos fight, and this is Sorbius's race to lose, essentially. But we will see what happens. Chaos pulled. We're gonna just hang out <laughs> with the thief, and it is gonna use our last fast cast and start swinging right away. What do we got? Six hits, two fifty-six. So time to start dumping some tempers in. Fire three does decent amount of chip damage, notably on the white mage. So no ribbon there as I think Edgeworth only has the single ribbon, and it is likely on that fighter, as they did not translate the slab and get the incentive ribbon from the Fane. But more buff, more buff magic comes out. Chaos opting for a punch, ineffective on Dash the Thief. 5 hits 738, we're probably in full weight and swing strats here. Getting damage in, 7 hits 971, lightning 2, not going to do it anything really to take care of Petra, our fighter. Chaos, an effective swing there. Six hits, nine, ten. Chaos with so much HP. Six hits, eight, thirty-eight. Get those GGs in chat for Edgeworth as they finish with an official race down time of one hour, ten minutes, twenty-five seconds. Turned out just some or some bad luck on that first dive in, but Edgeworth proving that their head is harder than the wall they were banging against gets through the wall and gets out the other side. Meanwhile, Sorbius down onto the earth floor, gonna try and get the finish. Definitely has the gear advantage and I believe the level advantage as well. What will or will it make that much of a difference though? We shall find out. Pulls the Lich. Gonna go ahead and get the cast off. Swing with that knight or with the ninja. Fade from the white mage. There goes the swing of the X Cal. Or is that the X Cal or the defense sword on that knight? I did not check, but that it's, is a dead Lich. It's the X Cal. Just gonna run away from the Agma pack. Does not feel they need the experience. Gonna go ahead and just go straight on to carry. If more Agamas and a giant couldn't get in the way. And we are joined by Edgeworth. GG's, buddy. Hey, thank you. How did that feel for you? Uh, it felt like Floater was bait, and the whole thing was super confusing. So, not great. That's fair. That's fair. Let's let's talk about bonking off stuff and how you finally learned your lesson <laughs> before going into Tofu. Uh, yeah. So I think it's like ninety percent of seeds I've done in practice. Oh, you already have loot, right? Uh, yeah. 
No, not today. Yeah, but uh, we saw we because we saw the the bonk on the Titan, which also like I was like, oh man, that feels bad. We saw the bonk off the DFC door. It's like, oh man, that feels bad. <laughs> but uh, you... yeah, so read the flags, kids. <laughs> Don't have time to read. You gotta go fast. But speed and power. G there you go. GGs though. That was a, it was a great race to watch. Now Sorby is pulling Kraken too. I did see the the chatter in the the race room um, after I popped in. Now they told you about the bowl, right? The ninety six bowls that showed up. Uh, yeah. And yeah, uh, it just felt really bad because, like, we'll, we'll talk about it more when when Sorbius comes in here. Um, but on through Kraken two, could they face Tia? Now this is Sorbius's first dive in. Now what what was going through your mind when you found the tail? Uh, I, I had already seen where Wormek was and. Mm -hmm. I've got the same room. <laughs> yeah, no, a truckload of nuke charges. So, yeah, no, I'm I'm not gonna promote. There's That's no fair. point. All the spells I wanted were in the first four pages. That's fair. I was thinking, I've I've seen gross tofers in these, and my thought was, if you grab the tail, Cardi is right there. You promote. You come right back. You kill Wormek with your Knight and Ninja. And now those night ninjas have immediate spell charges, and we can pick up like that life too for the night. Should we, we only have the one ribbon? So like, it just seemed like the safer play, but that might just be a habit that I need to break. No, it 100% was the safer play. I just felt behind. That's fair. What what made you feel behind? Uh, so loot being in. Uh, Mirage, rather than being in Sky, meant Floater just really didn't do anything. Yeah. Uh, and I think I had, like, God, 32 shards by the time I finished. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, we, stopped, we stopped counting them, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, it's kind of like playing DWR. <laughs> and you're, like, level 15, and you can kill the Dragon Lord already. Right. But you've seen, like, a tenth of the map. It feels yeah. really bad. That's fair. Uh, Sorby is going to pull Chaos. You want to call this one, Davian? Sure. We got the Power Bomb coming out for the night. We're going to go ahead and use some lock to help him with evasion. Going to get White Shirt for stacks of evasion on the team. There you go. Lock gets out. Fire 3 chipping down the team, but that extra armor from promotion definitely proving its worth. White Shirt coming out. Also having one more ribbon. Defense Sword on the Ninja. So Defense Sword on the Ninja. Power Bonk on the Knight. Going to go ahead and switch to Nuke and... Yep, you know, keep buffing with that white mage's few charges of buff magic. Nuke coming out 129, low roll, as is the lit 2, though, from Chaos. Fast comes out on that night, more defensive stat or defense stacks. Gonna go switch to swing, has the katana on the ninja, and the masa is on the night at this point. More white shirt stacks, really wants to keep the rest of the team evaded, let alone that ninja. Lit 2 doesn't care about evasion though, it just cares about doing damage. Swing with Masa, that is almost 500 damage. Cure 3 comes out to bring up some life. Swings with the Katana, not doing much damage at all, not having all that many buffs on that ninja. 131, low roll nuke. White shirts come out. Definitely, at this point, if Chaos starts swinging, the party will be evasive. That is 154, not much damage at all. Seven hits for 101. These swings not proving to be as high damage as they were or could be. That's a good one. 288 on the nuke. Four hits for 57. Ooh, there you go. 649 on that. But the nuke coming out and rolling very high, taking out the ninja, taking out the white sh or the white or the red mage. White mage meanwhile fading, getting out. Gonna switch to cure three. Really wants to keep that knight alive. The hit comes in for Chaos, does some damage, but seven hits for over a thousand, and that's a GG for Sorbius with a race time to GG time of 117.13. Yeah, so get those GGs in chat for Sorbius. We'll see if he wants to come here and talk to us about it. I mean, close, close race with how 
sort of sideways and route divergence happened early on. Had to wonder, Edgeworth, how you felt when you ended up going to Marsh and finding the chime there. Did you think that uh, that was just something Sorbius had sooner than you? Yeah, absolutely. GG's Sorbius joining us in chat. How are you feeling, man? Uh, pretty good, considering how sideways that volcano dive went. It was crazy. There was the early game... The two of you were holding hands so much, and then we get the canoe, and Sorbius, you went left, Edge, you went right. Um, what was, Sorbius, I guess we'll go to you first, what was the the thought behind going to, well, I think we got the canoe from uh, Bicky, right? It was very early? No, canal was Bicky. Canoe was in Matoya's cave. That's yeah. right. So after Provoca, um, Edge went south, and you went back left toward Marsh. Sorbius, what was the thought process of valuing Marsh over ice and volcano checks? Uh, since we already had the canal, um, I didn't want to get burned by a ship just chilling in Marsh Cave the whole time. That's fair. And Edge and making the port, so getting back out, it wasn't too hard. Yeah. And Edge, you went south to immediately dive ice. <laughs> uh, Risky play, many would say. How did what was uh what was your thought process? Was it just proximity? Uh yeah, basically. Like, hey, I'm in Provoca, I might as well try it. And uh if it doesn't work, I can always grind a bunch of levels in the lobby and then give it another shot. I had a bunch of houses. Yeah. That's fair. So that was the big divergence there, and then we saw the the early checks all of marsh like didn't really matter until it did like there was a lot of the key turn-ins like we had the ruby we had the herb we had the tnt all came from there also that that chime which later would be huge sorbius when we left the inner sea and you had the chime in your pocket was there ever a thought to like maybe i'll just go check mirage real quick or was it always just value chest density over a cheeky half dungeon check uh it was more at that point um i had already I had taken that really <laughs> stupid wipe after carry with those stupid death yeah. touch bulls and the like one tile in that room you can take an encounter on uh so i felt really behind uh so i wanted to do some stuff that i didn't think edgeworth was going to do uh at that point and hope that it's a key and that i would then give it edge by having those around there getting to keep fading earth cave which i tried to do from the whole scene i will ask you one more question and i'll kick the thavian did you notice that when you got the bullfight that you got an ambush on them no i did not yeah you had so that was i think that was the most bittersweet moment of that fight was it you could have just ran yeah well i didn't know they had death yeah. touch and, uh, no, no, that's I fair, had, yeah. You know, a nice fair. shield plus three, a nice armor plus six, yeah. and a bunch of other gear, and, you know, a decent sword. I'm like, I'll just hold A and kill these and take some levels on the fighter. Like, whatever. Yeah. They'll hit me yeah, for like 10 damage, it won't be a big deal. And uh, now they hit me for yeah. all of it, all at once. That's, that's fair. Um, not, the, not the first runner to have a volcano clear be undone by dumb RNG, and certainly won't be the last one, but... Uh, GG's though, you still ran uh, a heck of a race and will be a formidable opponent in those lower brackets. Uh, Damien, I'll kick it to you for some questions. I've been doing my thing where I talk too much. Hey, if you didn't talk too much, you wouldn't be doing comms. It's, it's a thing we do. But uh, GG Sorbius, uh, one question for you. What routed you towards promotion? Because Edgeworth definitely took the early magic and high numbers is enough to get around promotion. Did you ever think that promotion was a skippable thing? Uh, I tend to not um, on these flags. I like having my X-Cals and Vocal Swords and Katanas available, and I had an x and Katana in my pocket already, so I wanted to get those online. Fair enough. Had a lot of good gear roll up in general on this one. Did notice you did get the magic on your knight that pretty much saved you in the tof dive because you lost both the white and red mages. Uh, no, I didn't actually. The thief uh, rolled with charges of life. Oh, 
Mm-hmm. Probably uh, should have, but no, I did not do that. <laughs> it's all good. It happens. So we did talk. We did share your uh, food passions for game day snacks. Mm-hmm. Got some lively engagement from the chat. A lot of a lot of wing lovers out there. Um, well, wings is like my third choice if I could pick three. Wings are great. Are you a, a spicy or like a buffalo or like a, I'm sorry, a, a barbecue wing person? Uh, definitely spicy, but on the milder side of spicy. That's fair. Just want a itch. little bit of a tingle. I don't need to like get, get uh, chemical burns. And you're like traditional buffalo person, right? Yeah. So what are your thoughts on buffalo wings? <laughs> uh, they are God's greatest gift to men. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they oh. are the only thing that makes life worth living in that accursed city. <laughs> what, oh, you don't man. want to join in on the fans who were doing who were diving into the pit before games because they thought it would guarantee a buffalo win? Who's to say I didn't at some point? <laughs> Sports and superstition. Name a better, a more iconic combo. <laughs> uh, Sorbius, moving into the the lower bracket, looks like you will be facing the winner of the matchup that Krellen is waiting for. Not Young Me versus Flurry will feed into the victor there will take on Krellen. You will catch the winner there. So... How do you feel about the matchup between one of those potential three runners and Not Young Me, Flurry 14, or Krellen? Uh, I don't know much about Krellen or Not Young Me, but uh, I played a lot of Free Enterprise with uh, Flurry. So, um, nice little history there. Looking, looking forward to that. I'd ever beat him over there. Maybe I can beat him over here. There you go. Krellen has been around for a few years, usually pops in for tournament time. Uh, come a long way in their in their FFR journey. Not Young Me, relatively newer to the but no slouch in their own right. He's uh, pretty, pretty fast. He's one of those scary people that's down in the lower brackets. Hmm. Like, there are so many of them. And Looking at Edgeworth. the upper brackets, I'm just going to chime in here, because Caleb, you're Edgeworth's next opponent, so yeah, let's that's ask here. Edgeworth first. <laughs> That's why I'm here. Edgeworth, what do you think about uh, your next opponent? Oh, I'm going to the lower brackets. It's been oh, fun don't. up here. Oh, don't, don't, don't come at me with this false modesty, Edge. We all know. <laughs> we all know the score. <laughs> well, my um, practices have been hot disasters, so we'll see. Yeah, yeah we'll see. Um, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Edge, you and I, like, we go back you go back way farther than I do in this community, but um, we've raced a lot in like pickup races and just for fun kind of stuff. And I think I've only really beaten you when you, you got frustrated and forfeit in the scene. <laughs> and uh, and then, I, so I don't think I've ever beat you in a straight head-to-head matchup outside of like a group race. So I'm I'm feeling some pressure, but I'm, I'm this can be a good matchup. I'm I'm excited for it. No, I Not think optimistic. it'll be. I think it'll be pretty close. I mean, like, what are you up to in your stream, like, a race counter now? It's oh, like 500 it's like, something? It's 600. <laughs> we don't need to talk about that. <laughs> See, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. Yeah. Like, 100 of them are winter tournament flags. It's fine. It's fine. I've, I've, I've talked about the sort of um, a playful cycle of abuse that this uh, these flags have with me, where it's just like, they... Like you said, your your practice has been like sort of hot and disasters where it's just like they just kick the crap out of you and you're just like, Man, what am I doing why am I doing this? Like the I'm often reminded of the when I convinced you to join one of those spring tournaments years ago and then you sent me the Mist the Mist to get me out of here before the <laughs> tournament kicked off and it's just like that lives rent free in my head sometimes when it comes to this uh, tournament. But there are moments that sort of turn my perspective and I have fun with it I'm just like and right now I'm kind of in the middle of a fun renaissance with these flags so but I'm sure that will come to an end pretty quickly but uh, yeah 
I think honestly, if you lean into the ridiculousness, you'll have fun. Mm -hmm. Oh, so we want to do ridiculous changes to the flag's edge? The flags are ridiculous enough <laughs> as it is. Thank you. Oh, I, I want to go to the restream this afternoon. <laughs> Look, I want to go to the carnival, not to the salt mines. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, well, I mean, it's it's fine. It's fine. We can we can run them straight up. It'll be it'll be okay, and it'll still probably be pretty silly. Um, but I'm I'm looking forward to. I'll message and we'll figure out what we're gonna do it. But this is uh been a lot of fun, and it regardless, Edge, whoever um succeeds, we get the wood race, Chanigan or pickles and beer, and so it's just like it it's just it's just an uphill climb the rest of the way. Yeah, it only gets worse from here. Yeah, it's. I'm reminded of uh, Lord of the Rings, and it's like after that, it gets even better. <laughs> Spell zaps waiting and rubes, and it's just like no. <laughs> oh. I'm reminded of uh, Daffy Duck as Robin Hood swinging into trees and rocks. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it's gonna it's gonna be fun. Well, I guess we could pass the mic around for final thoughts, Davian, and give RPG when the break back their channel. Um, Sorbius, do you have any final thoughts for us on this seed in your journey to the tournament thus far? Uh, those bulls were, um, well, you could insert a word here, I suppose. Uh, otherwise, it was a good seed. Um, I, nothing was especially rude. I don't know. It was, uh, it was a good time. Awesome. Edge, our winner tonight... Final thoughts, buddy. Uh, Fabian, Ragnarok, ADR, Caleb, of course. Thanks for hopping on and putting this all together. I really appreciate it. Of course. I'm always happy to help out and get these races broadcast. I'm Caleb. Fabian, you want to take us home? May as well. Thank you, as has been said, Ragnarok for, tra for tracking, keeping us honest and aware. ADR for doing the restream, ever appreciated. My co-com, Caleb, looking forward to your race with Edgewater and Sorbius. Thank you for the race today. If y'all liked what you saw in this race today, feel free to go to FinalFantasyRandomizer.com where you will find not only the randomizer, but links to the wiki, which includes guides as how to play and links to the Discord. I uh, definitely want to check out the Discord if you can, because not only is there a lot of friendly faces there, friendly people to talk and communicate with, we will be starting up the Duckling Boot Camp following the end of this tournament, where newer racers such as myself, yeah, I've been in for a year, but there are way more things that I need to learn from these runners beyond their level. Uh, you can join up as a new runner, or a, a, an older runner in the community even, and uh, learn from the better runners in the community, different experiences and flags, different map randomizers. Hey, you could have no overworld even in this flag set, or in certain flag sets. It's very crazy fun. Uh, following the, the Duckling Derby, they or will be the Duckling Derby, which is actually a tournament specifically for ducklings to crown the Duckling Dawn, the best duckling of them all. Uh, Beyond that, thank you again, RPG Limit Break, for hosting this race and the race earlier today. We love you guys for the hosts. Everyone, have a great evening. Goodbye.